Hi, I'm Lou Scott, and this is Geppetto Room, where you don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you. Because here we're going to explore ways and methods, technologies, that can make it easier for you to make transformative decisions, creative decisions, about the way you live, about the way you work, about the way you live in, in Vermont. Now, a couple of shows ago, I shared with you seven points, seven tips to, to, to strengthen your brain, to strengthen your brain. I got these tips from a book called 60 Ways to Strengthen Your Brain. What I liked about, what I liked about this book is that there were easy ways to do it, easy ways to make your brain stronger, and a stronger brain is a more creative brain, and a more creative brain makes better decisions. But I liked what she had to say, let me continue, and, it, and what I liked also was it's supported by scientific evidence. She had a lot of research that these tips had were good. So I want to share today, what I want to do is share with you five more of these tips about strengthening the brain, making it more creative, actually, actually strengthening your whole body and making it more creative. Now, we need this. We need this. You've heard me say this many times, and I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it again in future shows. We cannot sell, we cannot solve uh, new problems with old ideas. Let me say it again. You cannot solve new problems with old ideas. You need transformative ideas. So let's, let's get a few tips to help you, to help you uh, be able to make transformative ideas in your personal life or in your business life or whatever. First one, first kind of tip is keep moving. Now, I'm not talking about moving from one apartment to another apartment or a house to a house. I'm talking about exercise, walking, hiking, tripping, uh, bicycling, yoga, whatever you do, sit in a chair and move your arms. We have to move. We have to move. When you move, you drive oxygen into your body. When you exercise, you drive oxygen into your brain. And when you drive oxygen into your brain, your brain works better. Now, let me share this statistic with you. In 2010, there were 35 million worldwide people with dementia, no brain capacity. Okay? If we keep up that trend, if we keep up that trend, there will be 105 or more millions of people, 105 million people with dementia in the future, in that year. There's no cure, ladies and gentlemen, no cure. However, science knows that if you keep moving, you're athletic, you're exercising, it, it prevents dementia, helps prevent dementia. So it's very important to keep moving. I don't care what you do, what kind of exercise you do, just exercise. Moving is health, and health is a good brain. Good brain is creative thinking. Let's go to number two tip. I talked about breath and breathing many other times, but there are two types of breathing. And let me go back. The idea that you can find many ways of breathing to help you, your overall health and help your brain be more creative. Look it up. It's, it's information, but I have two types I use myself, and it's very effective. One is a stress-releasing type. Here, let me demonstrate it for you. What, I, what we do is you, you take your breath in with your nose, hold the count, hold the breath for about five to seven seconds, if no longer if you can, and then let it out slowly out of your mouth. Do this for five minutes. You will relax. It's almost meditative. Your brain will relax. You have oxygen in your brain, and you'll make better decisions. Do it when you have to make a decision whether it's personal or business or whatever the case might be. The second technique I use, the second technique is similar. What it is is you, take the, you breathe through the nose, hold the breath for six or seven seconds, and then <laughs> whoosh it out, whoosh it out. Just force it out. Do that for five or six minutes. It's a, it's a way of refreshing. It's a way of, of enriching the oxygen in your body. The more body oxygen you have, the more certainly you have in in your brain, the more synapses you'll have and the better decisions you'll make. It's all about decisions, transformative decisions. Try that. Third one, sleep matters. Now, you, you've read about it. The doctors have told you, your advisors have told you sleep is very important. But let me, let me put it in a different way from what you might have heard before. 
Sleep is the way the brain, brain clears out, flushes out what's called neurological trash. Neurological trash, let me explain. During the day, the brain is taking in all kinds of input. All kinds of things are happening, all kinds of things, thousands of, thousands of inputs. When you sleep, what the brain does, actually physically what it does, cerebral spinal fluid flushes into your brain and starts to help synapses to, to kind of categorize what you went on through. Throw out the trash, put in the memories, give you fodder for dreams, give you fodder for, for good ideas. It does all this while you're sleeping, but you have to sleep. You have to sleep. The, the, brain, a, the brain cannot be dirty. If you don't get adequate sleep, you end up with what is, might be called a dirty brain, okay? You, a dirty brain cannot be creative, it cannot create ideas, can't even make decisions. So you must get sleep. If you're sleep deprived, what really happens is the brain shuts down. It shuts down. And when you wake up, you're shut down. You're not going to be able to make, you're not even going to function correctly. Very important. If you're having problems, and sometimes I have problems, sometimes I do have problems with sleep. And what I do is I do this, I do the stress breathing and so forth, I, and I do other things to relax and so forth. Find out those things because it is very important that you get adequate sleep. The, the concept of what's going on in the brain, what's going on in the body when you sleep, that whole process of clearing, of monitoring, like that, is called, and I don't really have this, it's a medical term, it's called grim, grim, grimphoric. It's G-H-Y-M-P-H-A-R-I-C. It's a system that cleans the neurotronic waste in your brain. It happens when you sleep, so sleep is important. And sleep is important not only for that reason, sleep is important for good ideas and transformative ideas. Number four. Mediterranean diet. Now, I talked about diet before, and I've always prefaced it with, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a do, do dietitian, I'm not anything, and then whatever I suggest here, I suggest you do your own research or contact your, your, your provider, your medical provider. The, the Mediterranean diet is made up of vegetables, vegetables, oil and vinegar, figs, radishes, any kind of vegetable. It's very light on meats, it's very light on processed foods. Obviously, it's moderate in alcohol and so forth, okay? But it, 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 it is, it's healthy. It's been proven healthier. The Mediterranean, oil and vinegar, is, oil and vinegar in salads, using lots of salads. You don't have to be a vegan. You can have meat, but stay away from processed meat. Stay away from too much red meat. Everything in moderation. It's very important. A good diet, like sleep, is conducive to better thinking. And again, better thinking is better ideas, and we need better ideas to solve our problems in Vermont. I would think so. Number five, one thought at a time. Now, we all pride ourselves by manipulating our devices, by doing multitasking. We do this, we do this, we do that at the same time. It's terrific. It's terrific. We have that ability. It's terrific. However, listen to this, and I'm going to repeat it two times. Multitasking is not multi-accomplishing. Let me say it again. Multitasking is not multi-accomplishing. The more you multitask, the more you strain the brain to think about lots of things at the same time, the less progress you make, the less solutions you can come up with. The brain can only handle two or three things, and it prefers, it prefers one thing. It's called concentration, especially if you want to make decisions, business decisions, social decisions, decisions for our state, decisions for your family. You have to concentrate on the moment, on the problem that you have. So put down your devices. Don't think about all these other things that you multitask with because it only diverts the brain from concentrating. It diverts the, the, the brain from analyzing and come up with better decisions. So multitasking is terrific. You can brag about it, but don't do it when you have to make good decisions. 
Don't do it when you have to make creative decisions. Don't do it, okay? Pride yourself, but stay away from multitasking. Concentrate. This one here is the last one. If you remember anything in the 30 minutes that we spend here, remember this one. This, is, this tip is made up of four or five elements, and I'm going to go over them. And they're very important for better decisions, very important for good health, actually. And important. So let's go through it now. The title of this one is Don't Be Afraid. Now, be creative. When you make decisions, get your, all your input, get all your input, but don't be afraid to make the decisions. Don't get trapped in an analysis paralysis, the inability to make a decision. Don't get trapped. You'll never have all the data that you need to make effective decisions, but you have to make decisions. Otherwise, you end up through your life not making any decisions. And those that you make, because you're so paralyzed, because you don't have data, you're afraid, you're not going to make good decisions. Don't suffer from analysis paralysis. Make the decision. Important. Do your homework, do your background, but make the decision now. Second element is change the paradigm. Change the way you do things. Change um, stimulates the brain. Stimulates the brain to think better, to make better decisions, to think, think just think better. Start out simply. Change the way you go home. Change the way you go to work. Change the direction. Change your interests. Change your reading habits. Change your friends. Change the idea that you're going to stimulate the brain with new things is good for big, better decisions. It's good for you as a human being. Change the paradigm. Change the way you do things. Create new interests. It's very important. And don't be afraid of it. Think everything is impossible. Think everything is possible, because it is. Meaning that you should dream big, dream big. If you, if you dream average, if you dream average, then if you fall below that dream or you, what you really want, you're gonna be below average. But if you dream big, big like that, you're gonna maybe fall below that, but you're gonna be above average. Remember, whatever you are as a human being, Whatever you can think about, you can do. Believe that. Believe that. Don't be afraid of it. Believe it. Dream big. Question the ordinary. If you're, if you're making a business decision or a social decision or an organizational decision, if it sounds ordinary, if it sounds like we did it before, don't do it. It's not transformative. What we did before is not going to help us today. Not going to help us. Our thinking has to be transformative. Don't be afraid of transformative decisions. If it sounds ordinary, throw it away, cancel it. Don't do it. OK. Today, I'm hearing a lot of words about want changing and uh, nativism. We don't want change. We have to stay what we are doing now. Let me explain about change. Change is very important. Change is constant. Change is relentless. Whether you accept it or not, it's going to go. It's going to happen. And if it happens without your participation, it happens without your participation. It bowls you over. But listen to this about change. When we make change or progress, it's based on, there's always a value. There's always a past values. Everything that, for example, specifically, Everything that we value in Vermont doesn't disappear. It gets added to. It gets enriched. So change, OK, is part of, of taking the values of the past and enriching them. You don't even discard them. So don't be afraid. Don't start talking about nativism or we're not going to change. It's not the truth. Change, true change, has values of the past. That's what makes it great. That's what makes it great. Actually, change without values of the past wouldn't be effective. Don't, don't be afraid of change. OK. Listen to your instincts. Sometimes we don't have all the data. 
Sometimes we're not going to make intellectual decisions because basically we're emotional beings. If you, but we get feelings. We get voices talk to us, or whatever the case might be. I mean, you, you have a, a feeling about something. You have an instinct. Go with it. Sometimes that's the smartest decision you can make. Go with the feeling that overwhelms you. Go with the emotion that overwhelms you. Sometimes it's the best creative decision. Be patient. Now, when you're thinking about, when you're thinking about making change, and you're talking to somebody who doesn't want to change, change can be toxic. It can get end up in arguments. Don't argue. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to argue. Listen, try to pick up where he's coming from, try to understand what he's talking about, and then discuss it. A great salesman once said to me, he said a no, was selling his products, was half a yes. Sometimes when people start out, no, they want to be convinced. Convince them. Again, as I said before, we need change. We can't be afraid of change. Change has value. Change is constant. If you don't participate in it, you're going to get left behind. Now, those are the tips. Now, I want to do something more specific. We have a downtown problem in Rutland, and a lot of our towns are, don't have economic vitality. People are not coming. A lot of empty spaces. We're not getting youth to come down. I have an idea, something that maybe we could do, or it might generate ideas on your part. There's a town in Western Canada, Banff, B-A-N-F-F, -F, I believe it is. And it has a natural vibe. Because at the end of this town, the main street, is this huge rock, Canadian Rocky Mountain. Huge, beautiful, trend, majestic, right at the end. And it gives the whole town a vibe. Now, that's a natural vibe. Now, what, why is it given a natural vibe? Because it's taken the best of Canada, the mountains, the magistry, the land, and it's put it right downtown. And so, it gives it the vibe. Now, Rutland, for example, specifically, doesn't have a natural vibe. It has, uh, we have to create it. It's not like other places. Why couldn't we create it now? When we think about it, that whole idea that I gave you, what, what do we think, what's the best of Vermont? The best of Vermont is our landscape, our forests, our bucolic farms, everything that people come, even the skiing, the mountains and so forth, people who come. People come because they picture, Vermont is picturesque, it's beautiful. Now, why can't we bring that downtown? There's a type of architecture called natural, naturalistic architecture that's very sophisticated, okay? And there's all, all kinds of ideas that concept. Once you accept the theme that you're going to bring what's the best in Vermont, the best that people understand about Vermont, similar to the Canadian story, what's the best about it? and bring it downtown, that could be the start of a natural vibe for Rutland and for many other towns, couldn't it? Let's think about that. If you're in a position to make those kind of decisions, make those kind of decisions. You have questions about it, send me an email. But do it, do it. Think we have to solve the problem of the downtown vitality. We need Rutland, or in all, many towns in Vermont, need vibe. It will bring in p new people. It will create economic vitality to our downtowns. So with that, I want to end. I want to end with these cautions again. Wear your mask. We're very close to ending this ordeal. I mean, we're going to have a new kind of normal, but we're going to end what we're, we've been through, OK? What we're all kind of like bored with and so forth. We're getting close to herd, herd immunity. Wear your masks. Keep your distance and get the vaccination. Don't worry about the, the isolated anecdotes of cases. Uh, certainly they happen. Every drug you take, you take an aspirin, certain people get sick. Okay? Get vaccinated. You're going to have to get vaccinated. If we don't get all vaccinated, it's just going to slow down this herd immunity. Do it. Do it for yourself. Do it for your fellow man. Do it for everybody, your family, for the state. Do it. Don't be afraid. With that, I'm Lou Scott. This is the Geppetto Room, where you don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you join me in the future shows. I hope you enjoyed the other shows that I did. I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to help everybody think more creatively. Change transformatively. Do new things. Change your paradigm. Don't be afraid. Those are the major points that I brought out. Thank you for the view, again viewing us, viewing me. I appreciate it. Uh, until next time, I'm Lou Scott.